In this installment of the gate design series, we'll be discussing how to size gates for injection molded parts. The size of a gate is important because it will have a large impact on the aesthetics and performance of the parts you design. This is because the gate size determines the shear stress that molten plastic will experience as it fills out your part, and it also determines how well part dimensions and sink marks can be controlled. By the end of this video, you will know the basics of sizing gates for your injection molded parts to reduce shear stress and optimize part dimensions. The gate is a designed restriction in the mold which will increase the shear stress on the resin as it flows into the cavity. We can control the amount of stress the material experiences by controlling the shear rate of the material moving through the gate. We care about the shear rate because it will influence the molecular alignment, fiber orientation, part aesthetics, and the amount of residual stress in the part, which can make the gate area sensitive to impact. Excessively high shear rates can cause the polymer or fillers and additives to degrade which may lead to weaker parts with cosmetic issues such as discoloration, gate blush, and splay. So, what is shear rate and how can we influence it? During injection molding, the flow of molten polymer is laminar. This means that the polymer chains flow in layers, like water slowly flowing through a stream. In plastics, we don't see the irregular and chaotic, turbulent flow that we expect to see in the cooling channels of our molds because of the molten polymer's high viscosity. Polymer chains tend to flow along a layer as they fill the cavity until they contact the mold wall. The material at the outermost point in the flow channel that is contacting the mold wall has a low velocity. This causes the material to freeze quickly. The material just inside the frozen layer is moving much faster, with the highest velocity occurring at the midpoint of the flow channel. The rate of change in velocity as we move across the different layers in the cross section is referred to as the shear rate. As for influencing the shear rate, we first need to understand how to calculate it. The equations for shear rates for Newtonian fluids are as follows. The shear rate through a circular channel, gamma dot, equals 4 times Q, the volumetric flow rate, divided by pi times the radius of the channel, cubed. And the shear rate through a rectangular channel, gamma dot, equals 6 times Q, the volumetric flow rate, divided by W, the width of the channel, times H, the height of the channel, squared. From these equations, we can see that the volumetric flow rate of the molten polymer and the radius for a circular cross-section or the width and height for a rectangular cross-section are the variables influencing the shear rate gamma dot. We also see that the shear rate is influenced most significantly by a change in the cross-section which has an inverse exponential influence on the shear rate. Therefore, we want to ensure that we get those dimensions correct. For a given desired fill time, we can calculate the flow rate Q by dividing the volume of the parts plus the runners, or the shot volume, by the fill time. And from there, we can calculate what gate size is needed to remain below the shear rate limit for the material. And what shear rates are acceptable? Shear rate limits for different materials vary and are dependent on the base resin as well as the associated filler. Recommendations for different materials can be found online or in an injection molding software such as Moldflow. The gate needs to be sized not only to allow the part to fill, but also to sustain pressure on the cavity as it cools. Because molten plastics are highly viscous materials, high pressures are required to push them into the mold. Restrictions in the flow path, such as gates, cause a high pressure drop. This means that the sprue pressure required to maintain control over the part dimensions will be greater for parts with smaller gates. The smaller dimensions of the gate will also cause it to freeze faster than the part of the runner, so it controls how long pack pressure can be applied. If sufficient pack pressure cannot be maintained on the molten polymer as it cools, the results are weaker parts with sink marks, voids, warpage, and reduced impact resistance. Therefore, the gate needs to remain molten long enough for pack pressure to compensate for volumetric shrinkage of the part. Larger gates will allow for longer packing times, which may allow for more flexibility in the packing pressure profile. As a general rule, the upper limit for gate thickness is 80% of the part's wall thickness at the gate location. However, a larger gate will be more difficult to remove after ejection and could cause a larger vestige on the part's surface. Therefore, gate selection and sizing need to balance the customer's requirements for both part aesthetics and the ability to develop a robust process. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know and comment below with any questions or topics you'd like to see covered on the channel. Also, remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new content. And if you have a specific problem you'd like to discuss with one of our plastics experts, please reach out. Our contact information is in the description box below. We'll see you in the next video.